looking back on the tours with Ozzy, we always hear about the debauchery and all the wild man behavior of Ozzy, especially off stage. If somebody was to be there, you know, I've always wondered, was it more wild than a person would expect or less wild than a person might actually expect? While I was there, Ozzy got to a point that he was really hurting, hurting emotionally. So Sharon gave him a little bit more rope so he could, you know, drink a little bit more just to keep him, uh, you know, allowing him to, I don't know, kill the pain with it. But then I, after I left, after I left, that's when you hear all the crazy stories of, of touring with Motley Crue and snorting the ants and, and all the stuff and, you know, things that, you know, stories that, you know, you can, if you watch the movie, The Dirt, it's in the dirt, it's in the book, all the bands talk about it, you know, but I wasn't there for that. So I cannot really, you know, as a witness, I cannot give you that. Uh, he was controllable. But I mean, controllable, Sharon made sure that there was not a whole lot of booze, if any, on the tour bus. He was basically doing an, an intervention every single day. And then after Randy died, it was kind of like, okay, you know, go for it. But she always kept an eye on him, making sure he would not go off the deep end how would you describe the relationship with him and ozzy because obviously you were very close and he's been described as almost like a son type of figure to ozzy yeah son brother yeah it was ozzy was really in awe of his musicianship and and his uh commitment you know you know he was authentic there was nothing really derivative about Randy. He wasn't trying to be anybody else but himself. 